Alright, so I guess I should probably get this out since the game comes out in literally three days. So, anyway, today we have a Modern Warfare beta review. So, if you don't know, if you didn't read the title, which I would imagine you did, then you know that today is going to be my official review of the Modern Warfare beta, or basically the first review of the game, since that's basically what we're kidding, just a little changes. I mean, all they're going to change is some icons and maybe the HUD, since that's usually the noticeable changes they do, nothing usually gameplay-wise. Anyway... So, this game is very different than any other Call of Duty we've seen in a while. And this time, I think Infinity War got it right since they're making amazing games. And the last two that came out just were came out at a bad time and got more hate than they deserved. But, back to the actual point. One thing I want to say is that this is probably the most finished COD I've seen in a while. Which is rare, I was not expecting that. Usually the beta is still messy and needs work. But this game actually feels finished with the only thing being small things that they can fix through updates. So... As with normal reviews, this is going to be into parts, so let's just get straight into part one. Part one, graphics. Alright, so this is actually a pretty big topic compared to other games. So if you don't know, this game runs on a new engine that I don't know what it's called, but it, has been, it hasn't been updated so for 14 or some years, so new, new engine is pretty good. So I think you get why this is a big thing for us COD fans, alright? And, you know, for my fellow PC players, if you don't know this, the new engine is capable of 4K and has ray tracing. Which is just, you know, nut worthy. So if, you, if you're rocking that RTX card, it's going to look extra better for you. Which I plan on getting an RTX card some one of these days, but yeah. So, PC players. Now, the graphics themselves, like the things you see, you know, the what you see, they look incredible. Now, I always gave Infinity Ward a good rep for graphics since they're usually good and look nice. While Treyarch is just a joke with graphics because... Still don't understand how Black Ops 4, hardly a one-year-old game, I guess it is over one-year-old now, but it looks, it looks worse than Black Ops 3, which is almost a five-year-old game now. Anyway, Modern Warfare graphics are just stunning, dude. They're crazy. You can see it, and this is on PC, by the way, with settings lower than all that, and they still look good. Now, one thing that I was worried about is that with this COD, when I went to PC, which if you don't know, I usually play on Xbox, and this time I went to PC, because it's just cheaper, Usually graphics on PCs with a mid-tier computer isn't that great versus console, which look nice. But I'm not going to lie, not going to lie, graphics look really nice on my computer, which is a pleasant surprise. And, you know, consoles usually always look nice, but they always have the problem of having only like 60 or 30 frames capped versus PC, which get over several hundred. You know, I'm pretty, I didn't have a counter, but it looked like I got way over 60 with all of these graphics on, so we're bullying it. Now, if you read the spec requirements for the game, it asks for an i7 with a 1660, which is a newer card, which I was really worrying me since I only have a Ryzen 2600 and a 1060, which I plan on upgrading, at least the motherboard and the graphics card. But, you know, the game worked fine, and I have almost everything on high and was getting almost a constant 90, somewhere around there. But, yeah. Now, I wasn't expecting too much frame drops in places, it's just with like a lot of explosives and stuff happening in the game. That's where frames were just kind of like shitting the bed for a little minute, but they went back. Otherwise, this game runs really, really well on the PC. But yeah, the graphics are insane and look incredible. Now on to part two. Part two, guns. So guns in this game are something else. So one thing is that that instantly caught my eye is which I thought was pretty awesome is that they're there's more than three guns in each class. Now, while some were available during the beta, there was still a lot that you could see. Now, if you don't know, good old Black Ops 4 has basically zero guns at launch. There was, I think, like five in the AR, and that was the most they had with only ranging from like one to four weapons in every other class. Now, in Modern Warfare, there's like eight ARs in the game, and this is just launch. This isn't all the extra weapons they're going to be adding. So, it... It was just so much more, and I it was amazing to see, since I was not expecting that. Now, there's always going to be that one gun that's better than the others, but it's good to know that there's others to play with. Anyway, besides that, the only other thing I really like about guns is that they they all play different. None of them feels like it's the same thing with a different case on them. You know, like, the Maddox was basically the ICR, but different sound and different, like, look. You, you get what I'm trying to say, so... They all feel different, which I was not expecting, so it actually makes ranking up these guns fun to use, since you're not just basically ranking up the same gun over and over. Then, the one thing that was hyped for this game, which was the gun sounds, and 
This was a little overhyped in my opinion. I was thinking it was going a little too hype, a little too hype. I'm like, okay, they're gun sounds, really. And I'm not going to lie, not going to lie. The the hype is real. The guns sound absolutely tier one, dude. There I don't there's very little games that have gun sounds as this good. And you know, if you don't know what you're listening to, then it's not gonna make too much sense to you, but these guns sound really good. The sounds of them are actually like firing them and it, it's a pleasure to just hear the bullets hit the ground. It's, you know, it, it's kind of like in Black Ops 1, you know, the Galil, how you hear the bullets hit the ground. It's like that, but better. Just the way they sound, it opens the floodgates of your nut. It's wild, dude. Like, it's just, ugh, everywhere. But yeah, the gun sounds are amazing, and bullets hitting the floor are super satisfying. <laughs> Not going to lie, I would gladly listen to just gun sounds in this game for hours on end. But. Class-wise, they have gotten rid of the old, good old pick 10 system for the gunsmith, which is arguably one of the best things I've seen in a while. So, now, with the gunsmith, you get five of anything you want on your gun. Perks, lethals, or, sorry, you get the gun perk, you get stocks, grips, reticles, well, why can't I think of it? But yeah, you get the point. You have five of each, and you get the perks and the lethal, which are just like normal and not nothing too special about them. But the gunsmith in this is pretty nice. So basically, anything you can do to change the gun is possible in this game. Literally, any sight you want, you can get it. You want a different stock, you could get it. You want a different barrel, you could get it. You want a different muzzle, you could get it. You want a different grip, you could get it. It's insane. Now I'm not sure how gun prestige works, since again I'm still too lazy in looking that up, but. I'm going on since there's a uh, 30 levels to a gun, which I saw like the M4, the max level was 30, which I thought was a little high, but who knows? Also, another thing is that you can change the caliber for guns in the gunsmith and the, change the guns themselves. For here's an example that was pretty big that they use. So you can make an AK-47, an AK-47U, which is just a tiny AK basically, or an LMG AK, which I forgot what they're called, but. You know what I'm getting at. So you could really just change it up. It's literally the most customizable you could ever get in COD. So you can do all this in the game, which can be a little overpowered because it's a little. You, you, so when I say this, you could do it actually in game. So if you're in a match, you can just go to create a class real quick and just mess with it, which if you get a new unlock, which is nice. But otherwise, it could be a little overpowered if you're you know what you're looking for and what you're doing. But yeah, you get the point. Anyway, Gunsmith is one of those things that you have to try to see to see really how fun it is. It's just one of those things that... It, it, you just get the point. You have to try it, dude. Anyway, the only downside to this, which I don't like, is that almost everything lowers the ADS time, which is annoying since ADS is already slow. And everything just makes it painfully slow. And I, I could imagine they could kill that. Or not kill that, sorry. Fix that. It's just literally everything, everything lowers the ADS speed, which I don't get. Anyway, on to part three, kill streaks. So kill streaks are back in this game compared to good old score streaks, which are it's nice because the UAV isn't 20 kills anymore, which I'm over. Jazz, it, well, you get what I'm trying to say. I can't speak today. They're like five kills, but now it's around like three. But it also comes at a cost. So probably wondering what kind of cost am I talking about? And that is with score streaks, it promotes camping and farming for kills and not playing OBJ versus score streaks which encourage you to go get kills and go get OBJ to get a higher score for the streaks. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if I was just like, oh, he has a high kill streak and he wants his streaks and, you know, that's why he's somewhat camping. And, I mean, I do it personally, I'm not gonna lie, if I'm, like, about to get my last streak, I'll run into a building and run around and farm for a while and just get my kills, but the thing there, or the thing here, is that kids do this the entire game. Literally spawn camp farm. They don't go out of their spot. They just sit there the whole game, which is annoying since not only do you, do you not see anyone to kill, making it less fun since they're all camping, but you get killed almost 100% of the time by these campers because these spots can cover sometimes over the entire map. For example, there was this problem where on Granza Raid, I think it's called. I forget where, but there's four places kids camp with two of them being the most common but the most powerful. So... One is over by the playground, which you'll, if you see, you'll know it's a fucking playground. It, there's a destroyed building that people camp in since you can see kids running out of both spawns and just pick them off. Second one is in the middle of the map where you can see both spawns easily and sides pretty well. 
Now the annoying ones which really get to me is the third one is the trenches which is all the way in the far right hand depending on which way you look at it. But it's on the far right basically and if you go in here you can almost see the entire map and you can pick off anyone before they see or you can pick off anyone before they see you which is just crazy. The only downside to this is that it's not very well protected. All you have is to just crouch and or not crouch prone. That's about it. Otherwise the fourth one which is the most common which is the most annoying in my opinion is that it's over by trenches the far north side there's a destroyed building that can see all over trenches spawn the blue building in the middle and they have all the cover in the world so it's almost impossible to get to them without dying so yeah it's just it's a whole thing but yeah with killstreaks camping is a huge problem which won't be fixed since maps can't be changed last minute so yeah it's it's whatever i guess anyway Killstreaks are nice and they're not broken so for lower kill rewards you have the personal radar which if you rock that you suck and you don't play for the team and you can fight me IRL. Anyway, you have the counter UAV which is pretty standard, the UAV which I shouldn't have to go into very much. Then for mid range kills like 5 or something you have the hellstorm or I forget what they call it but it's just one missile this time and it doesn't lock onto any people you have to aim it which is a nice change making it more balanced so yeah. Then there's a, the Warthog of some sort where you just choose a spot for it to spray onto and just hope it kills someone, which it usually does, doesn't. Then there's like the Wilson or something, which is like a mini tank of sorts, which I didn't see be used too much, but when it did, it didn't get that many kills, so that's probably why. Then for some higher tier streaks, you have the VTOL jet, which it does a first initial strike over the map, then just sits on top of the map and it kills everyone, which is really annoying to go up against. The only thing is that it takes around two missiles to destroy, so it's not it's not too awful. It's pretty weak, actually. Then, the one that I rocked, arguably my favorite, which is best for going for nukes, is called White Phosphorus, which, it you know, it does a lot. So, let's see. It, the first thing is that it, it could potentially kill someone when it first makes impacts on the map, which is rare, but it could happen. Then, it smokes the entire map so no one can see. Then, the best part is that it damages people, which means easier kills. Basically, what it does is that it lowers their health, so you can just get kills. This is why it's easiest for nukes, because it counts as kills and not score streak kills. Since, yeah. Anyway, then the main reason is because it, again, it just weakens them, and you can hear them cough, so you know where they are. So, if you listen, you can hear... <coughs> so, yeah, that's my favorite, personally. Now, then the only other one, which I remember in the beta and from general it's a juggernaut which is like a 15 kill streak or something which has rock music blasting in it which is pretty fun to use and i only seen it like once and i never played it so yeah so yeah i'm pretty sure that's all the beta kill streaks that we saw with more in the game obviously but yeah pretty sure there's actually the orbital vsat which is coming back which is gonna be <clears throat> anyway kill streaks are fun yeah good change just wish kids didn't camp that hard so yeah Part four, one of the last parts. The maps. Alright, so this is gonna be the shorter part since there's only like six maps in total with all the game modes. So Gra Gra Granza, Granza Raid, whatever you want to call it, I still don't know. The one I just talked about with the camping is the one I got the most. So this map isn't bad, but it isn't great, it's just kind of a eh. If I could change anything about it, it would probably be the right side of the map where it so it wouldn't just be a camping hotspot for kids. I'm not even going to try to say it, but the cave map, which is in like the Middle East, this was somehow one of my favorite maps and least favorite maps at the same time, so the outside portion of the map is great and I really enjoy it, it's actually fun to play on, just the cave part is the most annoying and it hurts, it just hurts playing, so the, 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 the main reason about this, the main reason about this is that it's too dark in there and you can't see anything, it's just... It's way too dark in there. You can't see anyone, which is super annoying, and they can't see, or actually they can see you since you have, like, the the light from the outside shining in. So, it's just light it up a little more in there, maybe give it more lights, and it would be, it would be fine. And, yeah. The next one is Hackney Yard, I think. This is another one I like, not too big and not too small, and it was, some, it was fun to play on since it was more fast-paced, so. Not really anything to complain about here. Just, alright. Then Gun Runner, it was fun and all, but you know my favorite mode for it was Cyber Attack, so that was basically it. So I would 100% keep it. Yeah, otherwise, eh, pretty pretty decent map. Now 
again there's only four maps and there's gonna be like 12 or something in the actual game so we'll just have to see now for the 2v2 there was pine which was one of the ones we saw when they first revealed the game it wasn't really talked much about so it's kind of like a setting the setting about it is that you're just in like the woods without too much camping spots because it's a 2v2 map so yeah i guess it's all right i didn't really play 2v2 that much then there was king which was somewhat annoying since the guns were poorly placed in my opinion but it's kind of the point of it so i, I guess i'll let it pass then the last one which was stack which it was all right i just enjoyed it a lot since some kids came in and just started trash talking me you know super confident in themselves and they absolutely got 6-1 by us so that's the only reason why i like it then the 64 players or the 32 v 32 there's only one map which was called karst river or something like that which i'm not going to say this map was awful but it's pretty all right that's about it very chaotic and a little bit of everything for everyone you could have sniper spots real up and close it's just so overall good map the only thing is that they need patch the glitch where you get under the map and just get easy kills and easily get nukes or the just how vehicles into play in what i can't speak just how vehicles are in the game today it's just it's it's just a whole mess but pretty all right map if they could just fix things so going on to part five my final part closing thoughts all right so i've gone long enough here and there's still more i want to talk about but nothing too important that's like ooh, we should talk about this so yeah this modern warfare might actually have potential which i never thought i would be saying for a new cod but hey who knows time will have to tell now obviously microtransactions are going to be in the game and if you're surprised by this then i don't know what you're drinking but it's pretty pretty good stuff and you know we know that there's gonna be no supply drops apparently for like a couple months in my opinion and they're, they're putting supply drops and there's no way they don't dude but yeah there's still gonna be microtransactions because it's activision you know god forbid they don't make more money than they already have but besides that just some glitch fixes and maybe some map changes so camping isn't the biggest thing about the game and i i I would enjoy the game a lot. I mean, either way, I'm still going to enjoy the game. And at least for a while, hoping they don't be for the game, which I mean, don't ruin the game to high hell. It, it would be pretty fun, yeah. Now, there's also game chat in this, which is super fun, because not only does it sound awful, it sounds like Modern Warfare 2 days, the game chat is just awful and everyone sounds like trash, but everyone's just trash talking and it's just super fun to mess with people. So, yeah, I like that. They should keep that in there, so... Yeah, this game could have very, very high potential in a fun game, but again, we'll just have to wait to see. Now, if you're wondering if you should pick up the game or not, I would personally wait until launch since Activision is probably going to do some shady stuff, and it's kind of obvious at this point, so I would definitely wait until launch, or if you're not too big into COD, just wait until after Christmas when Activision starts doing their shady stuff. So, yeah, otherwise, I personally really enjoyed the beta. I had a lot of fun on it, and probably more fun on this COD than any other in a while. Uh, you know was not expecting to say that but i was also with a very fucking cool squad and i plan on staying with them but yeah that's about it we'll just have to see anyway that's been it for the video hope you enjoyed make sure you leave a like comment subscribe for more on youtube i will see you next time goodbye